Welcome to this video where I'm gonna be showing you the best Chrome extension for SEO and also just for ChatGPT in general, and also how to reverse engineer that Chrome extension in order to get the prompts so that you can do everything yourself as well. The first stage of this is to go on Google and type in AIRPM for SEO. And um, almost definitely the first thing that's gonna come up is AIPRM for ChatGPT. Now, I am gonna be leaving a link to this in the description of this video because last time I made a similar video, I had a huge problem where people couldn't find it. This thing has almost a million users now and it's, it's, it's honestly incredible, okay? It's honestly incredible, not just for SEO, but for everything. So once you've got it, your ChatGPT will now look like this and this is basically Jasper, but completely free, okay? So you probably know what Jasper is. It's, um, it's, it was the tool that was before ChatGPT that did a very similar thing, but now ChatGPT is doing that for significantly less. So a lot of people ask me about things like Jasper, like would I recommend you pay for Jasper? Is Jasper good, et cetera, et cetera. Jasper is incredibly overpriced in comparison. So if we go on pricing here, they always make the pricing look better than it is, okay? But I mean, we're paying like $160 a month uh, at work, we're still paying for that just because it's not quite at the point where I can trust ChatGPT as much as I can trust Jasper um, in terms of being able to show my colleagues how to use it. However, if I was going to start from scratch now, I would definitely be using Jasper instead. Uh, sorry, I would definitely be using ChatGPT with AIPRM Chrome extension instead of Jasper. So one thing that we're going to be looking at, basically we're going to be looking at all of these different uh, prompts or not all of them, a lot of them. And I'm going to tell you why I think some of them are good, why some of them are bad, and also how to actually find the prompt. So first of all, I'm going to click here on human written 100% unique SEO optimized article. And I'm going to type in uh, Cesare Attolini as a classic menswear brand. And I'm going to make sure I'm on GPT-4 and I'm gonna hit enter. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna create a, um, it's gonna create an outline, but then it's also gonna create the article itself. Now, I actually do have a problem with this, okay? So this is why I wanted to make this video. My problem is that I like to do automatic internal linking, but this does not give you the option to do automatic internal linking. So what I'm gonna show you is how we can find the prompt and then add automatic internal linking to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click out of here and then I'm gonna click back into here. And basically, what you can see already, we have the prompt, okay? So the prompt for this, uh, this particular part of the Chrome extension is this prompt here. Now, I don't necessarily think this is the best prompt in the world, okay? Uh, it's just the one that I chose to start with because it was the first one. Let's read it. I want you to act as a content writer, very proficient SEO writer, writes fluently in English. That's already really weirdly written. First, create two tables. First table should be an outline of the article and the second should be the article. Bold the headline of the second table using markdown language. Write an outline of the article separately before writing it. At least 15 subheadings and subheadings. Uh, headings and subheadings. This is pretty good. This means that you're gonna get a lot of very detailed content. It's gonna be very long form content, which is fine. But again, it's not gonna internally link for me, so I, I'm not really happy with this. Then start writing based on the that outline step by step. This is an important part of it, the step by step. Write a 2000 word, 100% unique, SEO optimized human written article in English with at least 15 headings and subheadings include H1, H2, H3, H4 that covers the topic provided in the prompt. Write the article in your own words rather than copying and pasting from other sources. Consider perplexity and burstiness. This is super important to make sure it's 100% um, human written. When creating content, ensure high levels of both without losing space specificity or context. I don't know how to pronounce that. Use fully detailed paragraphs that engage the reader, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so what I'm gonna do at the bottom, and in the very bottom, write this custom massage. What, access all my amazing prompts? No, go away. 
So this is why I actually don't like using the actual prompt thing here because it's just loads of marketers who are trying to get backlinks, who are trying to get views. They're trying to make money from you, basically. So what I do is I take their prompts and I reverse engineer them and I make them better and I remove all of their marketing. So what I'm gonna say is try to include the following links as AH, no, as Markdown anchor text uh, hyperlinks. Okay, and then I'm gonna give it some internal links. So if you wanna do this slowly, you can just go to your website and because we're writing about Cesare Artellini, we're gonna to go to Cesare Artellini, we're gonna open these links here. This is the slowest way to do it, but it's also the easiest way to do it. So I'll just, for this video, I'm gonna to stick to this, although I do have many other videos talking about different ways to do this. So I do really like this plugin, but I don't like the huge amounts of marketing and everyone's trying to make money and you know, blah, 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 blah. So what I like to do, as I said before, is I like to reverse engineer and I like to basically do this instead. This is 3.5 instead of four. But I just want to see if this adds the internal links. Let's have a quick look. Doesn't look like it's going to add internal links, unfortunately. So here's another tip for you. Okay, it has actually added the links here. But first of all, this is 3.5. So I'm going to stop generating here. And I'm going to say, please uh, include internal links earlier on in the article. And then can I, I cannot change it here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recopy this. And I'm going to do a new chat and I'm going to go to ChatGPT4. And we're just going to do it again, but this time on ChatGPT4. But like I said, you don't have to do, you don't have to use ChatGPT4. Like that content would have been fine as well. It's just personally, I think ChatGPT4 content is much better than GPT 3.5. If you're a free user of GPT though, then definitely don't be afraid to use uh, the default 3.5. It's also much, much quicker. So we're going to look at a different one here. We're going to look at the mid-journey prompt generator. I'm going to say a, a um, sticker of a turtle. And I'm going to press enter here. I've just done this on 3.5 again, but it's fine. We'll just use 3.5. So again, I'm going to click off this and I'm going to click back into this because I actually want to see what the prompt is here. Because we all know that this particular thing is very, very complicated. But the, the power of having this mid-journey uh, creation prompt is insane. You can create some really, really good prompts here that will make some am that will make amazing content basically in the future. Okay, let's just quickly go back to the writing one and you can see that it's not including internal links. So you can stop generating and say, please don't forget to include my internal links. This is a really good tip for ChatGPT because it happens a lot that it just doesn't do a certain part that you've asked it to do. So what you can do is you can press stop generating and you can say, please try to include my internal links here and you can give it the list of internal links. Now let's see if it actually does it. Uh, this will be a live test. So I'm really, really hoping that it does actually do it here. If not, I'm gonna be a little bit annoyed Okay, it looks like it's still not including it. So what you can do again is you can stop generating, say, why are you not including my internal links? And you sometimes have to get angry with ChatGPT and say, please, can you include my internal links? And now it's just being sarcastic and it's putting them as headers instead, but it has technically included the internal links. So thank you very much for that ChatGPT. You are the best and most sarcastic AI that I have used so far. So yeah, that's how you write content. That's how you get one to write content for you. Let's move on to the um, mid-journey prompt generator. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna straight up take one of these and we're gonna use it in uh, Discord and we're gonna see what comes up. I'm very, very curious what happens here. So let's open up Discord and we'll go straight to Mid Journey Bot. If you don't know how to use Mid Journey, then this probably isn't the video for you because I don't think this video is going to include setting up Mid Journey, but we'll see how this comes out compared to my normal um, attempt at using Mid Journey.
I'm just reading this one here. This one here sounds amazing. I want to see this. A determined and resilient turtle crossing a busy, bustling street during rush hour. Surrounded by towering skyscrapers and flashing neon lights, contrast contrasting the quiet and steady pace of the turtle with the frenzied energy of the city. Artwork mixed media with a combination of charcoal, paint, and digital effects. I need to see what that looks like. That honestly sounds amazing. Okay, so the, result, the results of the first one are in. This is a majestic turtle swimming in clear, open waters. That really looks photorealistic to me, which is incredible. I do want to do this one real quick, just because I'm very curious what the results will be. While that's loading, let's have a little look at what's actually going on in the back end here. So, as a prop, prompt generator for a generative AI called Midjourney, you will create image prompts for the AI to visualize. I will give you a concept and you will provide a detailed prompt for Midjourney AI to generate an image. Please adhere to the structure and formatting below and follow these guidelines. Do not use the words description or colon in any form. Do not place a comma between AR and V. Write each prompt in one line without using return. Structure, one, a turtle. Two, a detailed description of the turtle with specific imagery details. Three, a detailed description of the scenes environment. Four, a detailed description of the scene's mood, feelings, and atmosphere. Five, a style, e.g. photography, painting, illustration, sculpture, artwork, paper, 3D. So this doesn't actually mention the ones that it's actually used in the prompt, which is pretty cool. A description of how five, a style, would be executed. Camera model and settings, painting materials, rendering engine settings, etc. AR, use AR1619 for horizontal images blah, 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 for vertical images, or 1-1 one, one for square images. Use Niji for Japanese art style, or V5 for other styles. Follow this prompt structure. Imagine prompts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, ARV. So this alone, this little piece of information here is enough to make this video incredibly worthwhile, because this shows you how you can get ChatGPT to understand, like, variables which is super important. I didn't actually know this before. So this is the main reason that I made this video is because reverse engineering these prompts is extremely helpful for understa understanding things like how to use variables inside ChatGPT. So this one, two, three, four, five, six ARV, and then this follow this prompt structure, imagine prompt one, two, three, four, five, six ARV, uh, ARV is super important to understand. And it's the main reason I actually made this video. That is pretty cool. It's not really the art style that I personally like. Open on website for full quality. Okay, open in browser. Oh, wow, that's actually amazing, that like comic book style. This is a car made from a tortoise shell, which is very interesting. I really like this, but yeah, it's not necessarily the art style that I, I prefer in general. Um, and then, yeah, it's basically just these example prompts here at the end. Uh, do not describe unreal concepts as real or photographic. Include one artist realistic photographic style prompt with lens type and size. So, yeah, this is super, super helpful for two reasons. Number one, I don't know how to do mid-journey prompts. So this alone is super helpful. But number two, it's even more helpful because it shows how to add variables to chat GPT. The last one that we're going to be trying in this video is Bayer Persona Legend. Now, I'm going to give the exact uh, Bayer, like what does your business sell and where are your clients to ChatGPT, and I want to see what this comes up with. So what does our business sell? Luxury, Italian, designer, clothing, and we sell around the world, mainly in US and uh, UK, Germany, etc. Okay, user, persona, luxury da, da, around the world, demographics, name, Sophia Brown, already a mistake because we don't sell women women's clothing, but I guess they didn't know that. This is super interesting. Occupation marketing director, I would say that's pretty accurate. Annual income, this is definitely accurate. Marital status, again, definitely accurate. Like most, a lot of people who buy our clothes are definitely married. Family situation has two children. Uh, I don't know if that's really relevant. Location, New York. This is super interesting as well. Sophia is a successful 35-year-old marketing director from New York, New York. 
She's married with two children, has an annual income of 150000 uh, She values luxury fashion and seeks to make a statement with her clothing choices. Psychographics, I don't even know what that means. Personal characteristics, hobbies, interests. So this is super, super useful, but I am I have to quickly change something just to say, and again, I hate this. Look at this, this uh, thing at the bottom, making money from this. I really don't like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click out and I'm gonna click back in and we're gonna steal this beautiful prompt here and we're gonna make it better by firstly removing the bit at the bottom, which I consider spam. We're gonna change this to chat to GPT-4 and we're gonna, basically we're just gonna have a look, but I'm gonna run this again, but this time with chat GPT-4 and making sure that it's talking about men. So you are a marketing researcher that speaks and writes fluent English. Your task is to generate a detailed user persona for a luxury Italian designer clothing company, I should say, I guess it doesn't really matter, around the world, mainly in the US, UK, Jordan, especially in a specific market. Um, we only sell men's clothing. Okay, that's pretty much all I wanted to change. So we're going to hit enter again, and we're going to see what it comes out with this time. So user persona, luxury Italian designer clothing around the world, mainly in the US, UK, etc. Demographics, data points, answers for market. I don't know what this market thing is. It didn't even give me a place to write market. Name, Richard, age 45, occupation, investment banker. Okay, so far, very good. Annual income, 200 grand, probably accurate. Marital status, married, probably accurate. Family situation, two children, probably accurate. Location, New York. We probably sell the most in New York, which is actually super interesting that ChatGPT picked up on that. Richard, a 45-year-old investment banker from New York, earns 200K annually, married with two kids, and prefers luxury designer men's clothing. Personal characteristics. Ambitious, yes. Confident, yes. Appearance, conscience, obviously. Hobbies, golf, yes. Wine tasting, traveling. So what you can actually do with this is you can take this and you can make, you can put your advertising around these data points, okay? Like people who like golf is definitely a good target market for us. People who like wine tasting is probably a really good uh, market for us. High-end fashion, luxury cars, and real estate are all very good points. So if you're a complete noob at marketing and you don't know anything about creating a buyer profile, this is a really good way to find, like when you go on TikTok or Facebook advertising, you to find interests in your demographic. This is probably the best way to do it if you've got no idea what you're doing. Personal aspirations, maintain an upscale lifestyle, okay. Professional goals, continue climbing the corporate ladder, okay, that's cool. Pains, lack of work, lack of time and work-life balance. Main challenges, staying up to date with fashion trends. That's actually really interesting because that would be good topics for blog posts then. Needs, high quality, stylish and comfortable clothing. That's exactly what we sell. Dreams, owning a luxury vacation home in Italy. Shopping behaviors. 15 to 20,000 annually, it's quite low, I think. I don't really know. Shopping freeze frequency quarterly. So that means they're going to be spending $5,000 every four months. That's probably about right, actually. Preferred channels in store online. Online behavior visits luxury clothing websites, reads fashion blogs and articles. Search terms Italian designer menswear. This could be super interesting. I might have to look at this in some more detail. Gucci, Prada, Versace. Don't sell any of those, but that's fine. Triggers, seasonal sales, new collection launches. Now that is super interesting. Seasonal sales is, I mean, it's obvious, but it's also very, very true. We have so many people who are sitting, waiting for us to put our sales on. Barriers, high prices, limited availability. Honestly, I am completely blown away by this. I think this is a really, really good way to understand who is going to be buying your product. So if you're selling online, definitely take a look at this prompt, but make sure that you make the prompt yourself using what I have taught you in this video. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this helps, and I'll see you really, really soon with some more content. Peace out.